We see a lot of cool classics on this channel, but this one in particular is bigger than most, and it belongs to my dad, Dirk. So today, let's walk around it and see everything about this 1949 flexible bus. So dad, most people haven't heard of a flexible. Tell me a little bit about what this bus is. So uh, a guy named Hugo Young from uh, Ohio had in, uh, patented and invented a connection between a motorcycle and a sidecar that allowed the motorcycle and the sidecar to lean in the turns. And that was called a flexible. And he did very well with that. But then people stopped buying so many motorcycles, started buying cars. He thought, I need to get into the uh, car or bus business. And uh, hence the name flexible. Hey folks, today's video is brought to you by salvagereseller.com. This website allows you to bid live on online salvage auto auctions without a dealer's license. You can register for free or use the 20% off coupon in the description below. Go find your salvage car gem now. Yeah, and so they were based out of Ohio. They made Loud a bunch of different Ohio. kinds of vehicles. It wasn't just buses that they made. No, ambulances and hearses initially. And as the business grew, um, buses, and uh, I think uh, actually uh, he was competing with uh, General Motors and he couldn't get diesel motors for his bus. Um, yeah. So he was buying, uh, I think it was a Buick uh, inline six gas motor. gas motor for these buses. So very streamlined because uh, they were underpowered. One, two, this does look relatively similar to the GM bus of the era, which uh, is, for example, the bus like um, at the end of The Graduate. Right? Yeah. So yep. that, that bus, it, it's got a similar kind of streamlined, streamlined shape. But it, it had the uh, split window in the back and even the Fugitive, the movie or the series, he would get out of town at the last minute and he'd be sitting in the back of the bus and you could see as it pulled away. Those were uh, GMs and... Um, but this bus also has had uh, its, its time in the spotlight a little bit because Elvis had this Elvis as a tour bus, yeah. right? Yeah. Not this specific one, but right. one of these. Years ago, I was on a trip in this bus and I stopped at a um, truck stop and was fueling up and this lady walked up to me and said, um, she, as a young girl, she was uh, part of the house band for a show called Laugh-In. And uh, they traveled all over the U.S. Uh, with her family band in a bus just like this. So she came on board and, and looked around and yeah, so meet a lot of neat people that way. It's a really cool shape and it reminds a lot of people actually of, uh, an, Airstream. of, of an Airstream. Yeah. yeah, so we've had many people ask us if it's that, it's, it's not that. Uh, but then too, around the outside. So a few yeah. other things. You've got a scoop up top. Is that the intake for the engine bay? Right. Uh, it's intake actually for the radiator. It sits at, a, at an angle above the motor and uh, pulls air through and exits out the bottom. I'll show you the, the engine bay real quick. And then the radiator is sitting up here. Yeah, and so and this so air comes down and this is actually a two-stroke Detroit diesel engine. So basically a, a fire truck motor, a V6, right? Yeah, it's a military spec motor, 6V53, two-stroke. You, you can't hurt these things, they're bulletproof. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, and you can it see just it just barely fits. It is turbocharged, good size turbo up top there, uh, in between the banks of cylinders, and then an Allison transmission, right? Allison, yeah, yeah. It's a four four speed. Now Part of the reasoning for that is because any, well, most other diesel engines are too long to fit in this engine bay. Yeah, um, and that's, that's an issue with an inline. I mean, it'd be nice to have an inline motor because its compartment's not very wide, but uh, it, you know, it's inline six diesel just won't fit. So yeah, and it, not a lot of stuff that you can put in here. It was an inline originally with a manual transmission, manual transmission. and the manual transmission was shorter, but the automatic shorter. transmission that's made it up to this axle is, is longer. So yeah. it kind of limited your choices when it came to- I mean, power. the drive shaft is maybe eight inches long. You know, yeah. you've got a universal and the universal and it really almost just a slip yoke and that's about it. And then coming around the side, one of, of for the entire mm. time that we've had this bus, and 
I mean, we, we used this bus primarily to go to NASCAR races back in the day, Talladega, Atlanta Motor Speedway, all that kind of stuff. And ever since, one of my favorite things about it has always been these Alcoa wheels look so good on this bus. Yeah, originally you would have had steel wheels and probably painted to match the body typically. Uh, not, not chrome on this vehicle. Even the, the fenders would have been, the, the bumpers here would have been painted. I had them chromed and of course went with aluminum um, wheel and I, I think a little bright work looks nice on the bus. I mean the look of it, it almost looks like a hot rod the way that the, the yeah. wheels and tires know, fit in it, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a really good look. <laughs> yeah, and you don't get any rubbing, right? No, yeah. no, it, it, it fits. There's not a lot of uh, s suspension travel on it, so um, yeah, now it works out okay. Now, Initially, when you bought this bus, I'm sure it wasn't the original color, but what, it was blue when you bought it, and then you had the whole thing repainted. Was there much rust? Did you have to do tons no, of No, it was California, work? Northern California vehicle, rust-free. The name they'd given it was Midnight, blue, Midnight Express, and it was a very dark blue. Um, and then I saw a bus like this with the two-tone paint, black and white, and Case's mom picked out the green and, and uh, cream color and it's a really nice color combination so yeah and then you've got these super cool marker lights kind yeah. of a bullet shape that's original isn't it it's not actually oh, okay. and it, it is a, a vintage uh, piece um, you would occasionally see buses with with the bullet type of lighting but um, they had a kind of small more typically from the factory and of course they built these according to what the uh, the buyer spec right um, this bus was run out of San Francisco by Gray Lines. Not Greyhound, but Gray Lines. Okay. And they used it as a um, airport transport bus. Yeah, and it was originally a 27 passenger, right? Yeah, uh, inner city bus, yeah. essentially. Yeah. So yeah. It, it primarily stuck around town. You can see here some dual tanks. Do you know around right about what the fuel capacity 40, is? Uh, 40 gallons each tank, so a total of 80. Okay, so I mean, for an RV, that's that's I guess not. Oh yeah, a, a no, crazy it's, it's amount, but yeah, it's, it's you can get a get amount. good range out of that. Um, well, do you know? Uh, remember what you typically I think see? Uh, mileage range? probably between 14, 15 miles per gallon. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's really good. Well, she, you know, highway speed. She's only turning probably around two thousand or maybe eighteen hundred RPM and two thousand and and uh, just you know cruising down the road. Well, the other really cool thing about these buses in particular is that they, well, so unlike the GM, they don't have the rear window, but they have these windows up here in top, which we'll be able to see a little bit yeah. more when we step inside. And they're original. A lot of people ask about that. This, so this, is, this bus was a sightseer model, and the sightseers were used in you know, some of the national parks and, and other, uh, you know, for a typical... Um, highway bus, an inner city bus, intra-city bus, and not a city bus. Okay, so between? Between cities. towns or right. cities. Yeah, because in the back is a big luggage compartment. The city buses would have had a second door further back to allow people right. on and off back there. From both ends, yeah. But this is a highway bus, and this is a bus, more of a touristy kind of a bus, you know. So uh, the sightseer windows up top gave you, um, you know, more... Uh, more sight lines, and uh, that makes it unique. It would have had uh, eight windows total. It has four now. The center ones uh, we blocked off, so you can have a, a kitchen and yeah. cabinets and all that. And then also really cool, so a few things around the front. First off, up top, this is where you would say basically your, your Des destination, destination, where you're heading yeah. when yeah. this was a, a passenger bus. Right. But you named this bus Seabiscuit. Any particular reasoning behind that? Uh, I just finished reading the book when I bought this, and it's just such an amazing story, kind of a fun name. Um, people love Seabiscuit. She, she ran during the Depression and, and uh, was uh, America's hero horse, and uh, I thought, well, this, uh, this bus is still going, and Seabiscuit had injured her, uh, him, himself badly, but, uh, and, and the jockey also, but they kept going and uh, had, had just a wonderful run together, and I thought it's just an appropriate name, so. And then also really cool on the front end of this bus, 
so this, as well as the rear bumper, these are original correct bumpers it's for this bus. Very hard to find piece. It had a, a more contemporary bumper and was able to find this piece, had it chromed, and uh, it's got a nice clean look to it. And of course, the, the badge here is just yeah. fantastic. It, it needs a little polish. This is the first time the bus has moved in probably three, four years, so she's a little dirty. Apologize about that, but... Um, it's also yeah. really cool. All the rivets all the way around yeah. this bus, this old school construction. You've got some fresh air vents here that right. you can open up from inside, which is cool. That's yep. very old school. Yep. These turn signals, were these original or just Original another? and they're okay. glass. If we move around to the inside of the bus, you can see, so the, the build out on the inside of this you did, I mean, how many years ago would that have been? Wow. Um, gosh, probably 14, 16 years ago. Yeah, know. I mean, so it's it's, it's been, been built time. out like this for a long time. And honestly, the, the build out on it has, has aged really well. I mean, it, it doesn't look super dated. Yeah, no, it's, you know, it's nice woodwork. And, um, you know, people step on board and they're like, oh, it seems like it's like a yacht, you know, yeah. it's kind of aging that way. And it's a very friendly space. We, you know, Case and I spent a lot of time on this bus going to NASCAR races over the years. Now, when you step inside, we, ha we have to show one of my favorite things on this bus is the latch mechanism, which is a remnant of this being, uh, you know, a bus, a passenger bus. So that's how you could open and close the door for passengers getting on and off. And it's just such a cool mechanism. It's the original hardware, uh, original even to this bus. And I had it all cleaned up and chromed and yeah, it turned out really nice. These are the kinds of things that they, they just don't make components yeah. like that anymore. I mean, look how overbuilt that is. That This will outlive, well, already has outlived yeah. most vehicles yeah. that exist and it will continue to do so. I mean, I mean, if you consider how many times this would be open and closed, you know, it. Uh, yeah. It, it, they really overbuilt it for that reason. Yeah. And then show me the cockpit here. So obviously you've got a really cool old school steering wheel. Yeah. It's, it's Sitting position is pretty comfortable actually. I mean you're right at the front. The axle's behind you. You know, kind of lean your arms on here. You can uh, you can sit here all day long and, and be uh, be fairly comfortable. But uh, yeah, no. got my switches here, headlights, marker lights, some accessories. Um, uh, this is the ignition on start button kill button there i can flash my uh, my headlights if a if a truck is trying to pass me or even my marker lights as a thank you for letting me in gear shift the stone bennett uh, electric over air little gps unit there um yeah, yeah. and then to uh this is for your horn right here which is also air yeah and you've got this cool split window here that you can pop open either in the front or in the back. So yep. I guess if you pop it open in the front, it, uh, it pulls air in, right? Right, I would pull air in and uh, there it goes. Yeah. yeah, all really cool mechanisms that have survived such a long time. And uh, and then too, you've got your air brakes up here. So again, I mean, everything is air Everything's powered, powered by air. Even to the windshield wipers. Yeah, uh, brake, <laughs> even the throttle, um, windshield wipers if we have enough air pressure, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, they really work. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all original. Yeah, so it's it's uh, it's it's a pretty unique cockpit and a cool place to sit. And then from there we move back into the actual living space. So this is is a place that really you and I have spent a lot of time. Uh, again, we we used to take this to NASCAR races. That's pretty much what it was built out for. And you know, we spent a lot of time camping, tailgating in this setup. And it, it was it was a really functional space. Yeah, yeah. Comfortable, you have air conditioning, we had our television, uh, music, and all our friends. And uh, you, you'll meet a lot of people when you're in an old bus like this. It, 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 at times there'd be a line of folks who just wanted to come and talk to us about it. Case was actually pretty good. Maybe some of his journalistic skills started <laughs> back then. But he would be like, yeah, it's, you know, it has a Detroit diesel motor in it. And he'd be answering all these questions while I'm sitting there drinking beer with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it, it would. I mean, probably 40, 50 people a day at least, oh, yeah. I'd say, Easily. would come up and say, hey, what is this? Yeah. I've never seen something like yeah. it. And so talking a little bit about how functionally this space is built out. So you've got a uh, couch here, obviously, and you can place a table right there. You've got some storage underneath it. But the way that this is set up, you have in here some hooks 
and this board behind the cushion. So what you can do is you can clip the board there, then you can string up these cables yeah. to both sides of the roof and place that cushion down so that you make this twice as wide so yeah. somebody can sleep there. And then when we were kids, what we would also do is basically collapse this tabletop to sit on these pegs right here. And then you could take one of those cushions and put it there. It's not really a tall enough space for an adult, but for us when we were kids, it was perfect. Yeah, yeah, it worked out really well. So you really had three sleeping berths. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was about it. Yeah, and then to move in toward the kitchen. So here you can see, I mean, we've got stove, microwave, we've got a sink. And, uh, and how did you build all this out what was kind of the process yeah so i kind of figured out what i wanted uh, on the bus and had measurements for everything laid it out on on the computer and, and tried to figure out exactly where it could go or if, if it could even fit like one, one of the things that was really hard to fit it's got a, a diesel generator an 8, 8 kw generator which sits right under here and it just fits in there with the the oven and stove and um it's all insulated in a compartment, but uh, and of course you have to have a shower and a commode and, and a master bed and a sink. So it's got two sinks, a kitchen sink, but also a bathroom sink and uh, just barely got it all to fit in here. Yeah, and you worked with a uh, carpenter to yeah. get all this put together and it... He framed everything out. I, I, I laid everything out for him, he framed it out and then uh, uh, built built these fronts and I refinished everything, installed it all, and uh, yeah, it worked out. And then if we move further back, you can also see that we've got a good size fridge here. I mean, it's it's a yeah, you a pretty tall from, from this side RV here. fridge. Here I'll show from the top. Yeah, so you know, I mean, it's it's a pretty big fridge. I don't think we were ever yeah, struggling. standard RV fridge. I mean, some of the big uh, big buses are doing. Um, you know, home home type fridges, but this is an RV fridge, dual fuel. And then you've also got a few controls here. So what? What is yeah, that? Yeah. So this is my tank monitor. It tells me fresh water. Uh, it tells me uh, battery. Also, it gives me uh, black tank capacity, uh, gray tank capacity, uh, propane. Um, and then this is my inverter control for the house battery. So right now we're actually making 110 volts off the battery. Yeah, and then if we move just a little further back, you can see a pretty decent size shower set up here. Let me close this door for you to show you what that does here. Yeah, so you can Seats basically, there. you can separate off this entire bathroom area. So here you've got a toilet and these windows back here are tinted. So from the outside, you really can't see in. Um, and then, yeah, you've got your sink, your mirror set up so you can block off the whole bathroom area from the rest of the bus. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. It gives you some privacy. Um, you know, you can shower and get changed, and people can be up front and you know, have, uh, have your own space here. So yeah. Really well. And then finally, you've got all the way in the back this king size mattress. So this is basically the master suite. You've got tons of light in here, and luckily my my dad likes to get up early, so that didn't bother him. <laughs> nope. And then uh, you've got your electric controls right there in the back, and access to a bit of extra storage. Exactly, and what what's very nice about the bus too is that it has a diesel hot water heater, which is a tankless. So you're making hot water as you use it. See, so unlimited hot water. I hold um, 80 gallons of fresh, uh, 40 of gray, and 30 black. So it works out pretty well. Nice. Yeah, I I don't think we ever had an issue with right. running out. It was yeah. pretty pretty good functional system. Yeah. Yeah. So we're actually pulling out onto the road right now, and uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, it's a very interesting seating position for you up here, huh? It's comfortable, you know. Um, axles behind you, so it's kind of a different driving experience. Yeah, and you're yeah exactly. You're sitting in front of the front axle, so when you steer, you really swing around a lot. Also position of the steering wheel is a lot different from any modern car because the wheel is basically flat. It's flat and there's nothing in front of you so um, you know big windshield it's a little dirty right now but engine being you know 30 feet behind you it's kind of it's a nice quiet ride actually up front here. Yeah and it I mean it, it runs 
pretty well. Uh, you've gotten this even pulling a, a trailer up to what? I mean, 70 miles per hour yeah, or so? Yeah, 70s. That's about top speed for you. Now, it's obviously here at sea level. I think probably up in the mountains in Colorado where we're based, it, it would maybe some of those grades. Yeah, it'd be tough. <laughs> it'd, it'd be yeah. pushing pretty hard to try and, and, and get through the mountains. But uh, here in the southeast, actually, this is uh, a, a plenty capable vehicle to, to take on the highway. Also, he has a lot more projects that he works on with two wheels and four. And what's your website? Uh, BadBettyGarage.com if you're interested in seeing some photos of the bus, how it looked originally. And as we progress through the build, you can, uh, you can find some pictures there. Yeah, because he did a pretty good job of documenting this. He did a good job of documenting his bikes and everything that he works on here out of the shop. So check out his website. We've also got a YouTube channel called Bad Betty Garage. Or you can see some of his projects yep. there too. Awesome. Well, give us your comments, guys. Yeah. Hope you liked it.